Have a look at these ridiculous prices on the XPS 17 in Australia. $5,400, $5,400, all right, for the base model i7 and a 1650 Ti. It's not even the RTX 2060, and it's not even the 8-core processor. Are you joking, Dell? This is a disgrace, like seriously. <laughs> Righto, tell you that champs. Now let's talk about the XPS 15. I've had it for two weeks now. My two week review, what I don't like about it. Talk about the XPS 17 as well. And I'm going to answer all your questions. Well, the ones that come up most often. And I have so many questions. So yeah, I'm going to rapid fire them. So when it comes to the XPS 15 after two weeks, is it worth it? I've got to tell you, when the MacBook Pro 16 come out, I was worried. I was worried for the XPS 15 because, you know, they raised the bar with that MacBook Pro 16. And if you don't know, they're my two favorite laptops, XPS 15, MacBook Pro. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know, people with taste, people that like the finer things in life, they'll pay a little bit more for something a bit sexy, a bit more usable, a bit more refined. And I was worried for the XPS 15 because I've got a lot of XPS 15 viewers that like XPS 15. And if it was a stinker, I'm going to tell it how it is, so a lot of people would be disappointed, but thankfully it's not, and I think most of the reviews are positive, and I think they just killed it here, you know, the way this looks compared to other 15, 16 inch laptops is just out of this world, it's just, you seen that photo, it looks like a 13 inch laptop compared to these other ones, actually it's more like a 13.5 inch like Surface Book 3. And the 17 inch will be more like a 15 inch, a normal 15 inch laptop. It is amazing the footprint. Gives me the performance I want in video editing. You can edit up to 6K content, no problems. I edit 6K content on it. It does what I want it to do and I can game too. Every single game, 60 frames per second high setting other than Red Dead 2, which is, you know, that's normal. So if you actually wanted to know the difference between the last XPS 15 and the new one, that pretty much tells you right there. There's not a great deal of difference in performance and you don't get the OLED display that you get on the old XPS 15. So if you want OLED, you have to go with the older XPS 15. But in terms of performance, if we just put it in a gaming context, the graphics card is more powerful on the new XPS 15. The 1650 Ti, it is just faster. On the 7590, you would play games at medium to high settings, 1080p 60. With the new one, you're going to be playing pretty much everything 60 frames per second high. I didn't have to go medium other than Red Dead. So that's the performance difference. Otherwise, there's not that much difference in performance, even for video editing and stuff like that. One thing I will say is the 16 by 10 display. That makes all the difference for content creation. And the new display might not be OLED, but it is friggin' amazing. The keyboard is really nice. The trackpad I'll get to later. And no, mine is not faulty if you just wanted to know that. I like the port situation. I like that the fans stay off. Most of the time, I never hear the fans at all. And then when the fans come on, it's like one of the quietest 15-inch laptops I've had in terms of fan noise. It's even quieter than the MacBook Pro, which is one of the quietest as well. Although the MacBook Pro and XPS 15, the fan noise is pretty much the same. You could only tell on a meter. But the way the current XPS 15 is power limited with the new BIOS, you're never going to see it overheat. You know, someone said, oh, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the thermals and whatever. It's like, what? What are you talking about? I don't understand. I've told you in the gaming review, go check it out. At best, 40 watts CPU, 40 watts GPU. And it's running in, you know, high 70s, 80 degrees. If the CPU wattage goes down to 15 watts, which it can do gaming, it's going to be 15 watts CPU, 45 watts GPU. And then it's running in the 60s, so 60-something degrees. The only time you see it hit 100 is if you just hammer that CPU 100% load. It'll peak up to 100 degrees quickly, and that's basically a fan curve thing. The fan doesn't come on. I don't know why. They've got to fix that. But in doing that, like, say, for example, Cinebench, it's like running 70-something watts in pretty much the whole test until, the, like, the very end where it goes back down to 45 watts. But just know, if you're running games for a long time, it can do it all day long because of that power limiting and the temperatures aren't high, so you don't have to worry about that. So what are the things I don't like about it? Well, I don't like the friggin' price in Australia. Have a look at these ridiculous prices on the XPS 17 in Australia. 
dollars, all right, for the base model i7 and a 1650 Ti. It's not even the RTX 2060, and it's not even the eight core processor. Are you joking, Dell? This is a disgrace, like seriously. In the US, you can get the top of the line model with the eight core. You can't get the i9 yet because Intel is so far behind on 14 nanometer. They cannot keep up with demand and it won't be till July that you can get an i9. But you can get the 8-core XPS 17 in America for less than this 5399 when you convert it. Even at our tax, whatever, you can get the one with the best graphics, the best CPU currently available and it's still cheaper than this. So, oh, you're a joke. The trackpad's fine. But it's not my favourite trackpad. Mine is not faulty at all. I just don't like the clunk on it. It's sort of like a weird dampened clunk. And it sort of like has two stages to it. Uh, maybe some people will like it. But I don't like the click. The actual trackpad itself works fine. You know, every now and then a gesture would just happen when I was touching it by accident. But the track and everything else is fine. It's just that clunk. Now I do got to say... I'm getting used to it now, so it's like not that much of an issue. But come on, PC manufacturers, seriously. Put some effort into your trackpads to actually be a Mac trackpad from like five years ago. Like seriously, catch up, man. And the only other thing I don't like about it is I would like to see that BIOS tuned a bit better. Where the fans come on quicker so we can get more performance out of it. They just need to work on that BIOS and tune it just so it's a bit better. And the fact that it doesn't get as good battery life as the last model. Now I have made a specific video comparing the last model to the new model. The differences between the two. Check out the description. You can look at that. So you can compare the old XPS 15. Should you buy that or should you buy the new one? Check out that video. So that's how it is. Awesome Dell. You've done a great job. You're ripping us off in Australia. I will say that. Is it worth the money? No. I would not be buying one in Australia at the moment just because you can get a Mac cheaper. So that's a problem. I'll just recommend the Mac. I'm not saying it's a better laptop than this. They're so close that I would just go with the one that's cheaper. And currently at the moment, I mean 5400 I mean, I can get a MacBook Pro, you know, much cheaper than this with an i9. And this thing's got an i7. And I just, yeah, upgrade the RAM and basically the same thing. So I don't recommend you buy the XPS 15 or 17 in Australia or any other regions where it costs more than a Mac. In the US, you get better pricing. The XPS is definitely worth getting over the Mac just because it's cheaper. I've already done comparison videos. Go check them out. But really, where I sit now, I'll just get whatever's cheaper. Uh, okay, the thermals, I've addressed that. At worst, it's going to be 40, 45 watts CPU, 40 watts GPU. It's supposed to be a 50 watt GPU, but yeah, it'll go down to 40 watts if you're, you know, doing sustained runs. XPS power limiting, yes. The XPS 17 will be power limited, yes, 100%. It's 130 watt package. I reckon you got about 90 or 100 watts to play with. Considering that, if you have a look here, all right, it uses 13.98 watts, so 14 watts. So that 17 inch display uses 14 watts. So that's 14 watts out of your 130 watts. Then it's got to power everything else on the laptop. Not every power brick will put out 130 watts. And what is the power efficiency at 100 watts? So I reckon you only got about 90 to 100 watts to play with. They'll just have to dynamically balance that. I suspect the CPU will be whatever, 45 watts. And the GPU will probably use about 60 watts, something like that. Maybe 50 watts on the CPU, 60 watts on the GPU. That'll be best case scenario, but it will be power limited. It is a max Q, but the bonus to that is on battery, the performance will be better because the XPS 15 was still performing quite well on battery. So I could edit on battery. I could get good render times on battery. It was maximum 30% slower. But you can definitely cut on battery. Whereas some laptops, once you put them on battery, yeah, they just chug along. The trackpad, I've covered that. Mine's fine. I have heard a lot about it. Like a lot of people having issues with it. I can only tell you that mine's fine, except, yeah, I don't like the clunk and that two sort of step feeling to it. The prices in Australia, absolute rip off, 17 and 15. The prices from the 17 to the 15, is it worth it? Well, you get the two extra Thunderbolt 3s, you get the bigger display, you get the better graphics. 
you've got to think a 1650 Ti, there's actually a graphics card in between a 1650 Ti and a 2060. It's the 1660, right? So it's a big jump. It's not a little jump from a 1650 Ti to a 2060. Now the jump isn't as big as it should be just because of the power limiting of the 2060, but you still get six gigabytes of memory and it is just a faster GPU. Battery life 4K to HD. Well, the 4K, I've told you, it's going to get about six and a half, seven hours with the 4K on the XPS 15. The full HD will get over 10 hours and the 17 inch will probably be the same as the XPS 15 with the 4K because even though the XPS 17 has a bigger battery, it uses 14 watts versus 10.4 watts. So it uses like three and a half watts more. So the battery life will probably be the same as the XPS 15, very close. And it is the display that's going to make the difference. Of course, once you hit the GPU on the XPS 17, yeah, it's going to drain that battery much faster than the XPS 15. i7 versus i9. Go check out my i9 versus i7 on the last XPS 15. It will tell you the differences between the two. A lot of things now, it's not going to make much difference because of, you know, hardware encoding, etc. Wherever you're going to be using cores, it's going to be up to 20% faster there, or maybe 25 at best. Fan noise have gone through that. Excellent. You never hit a fan until you really push it. XPS Ryzen, well, <laughs> yeah, I hear that a lot. They should have went to Ryzen. Yeah, imagine that, right? They had the Ryzen. As long as they keep the Thunderbolt ecosystem, I'll be happy to go to Ryzen. But the problem is I actually tested a Ryzen, the 4800. I've got one sitting here. And I tested it with Adobe's new update. And it still has issues playing back H.264 and H.265 in the timeline, the scrubbing and that. And it encodes slower as well because it doesn't have Intel HD. So maybe for DaVinci it will be better. For 8K footage it's definitely better with the Ryzen. Imagine a 35 watt Ryzen, you could give more budget to the GPU then, couldn't you? So currently as it stands now with the software I use, the Intel system is still better. Now DPC latency, wow, that is awesome in this XPS 15, okay? This is going to be great for music production because the fans stay off and the DPC latency, no issue whatsoever. I got down to a 32 buffer size. You can check out my video comparing the Surface Book 3, MacBook Pro 16 and XPS 15. Check that out and you'll see DPC latency. You'll see the performance differences between these three laptops. And someone was asking which one would you pick out of those. I'll definitely be getting the XPS 16 or a MacBook Pro. As I said, whichever one's cheaper, get out of those two. I would only get the Surface Book if you need that tablet bit where you can draw on it or whatever. I've talked about OLED. When's the i9 going to be available? Last I heard is July. Wi-Fi 6, Qualcomm or Intel. All of them are the Intel Wi-Fi at the moment. The XPS 17 I get, it's a good chance I'll return it even if I like it, just because I want to wait until the Qualcomm modem comes out and the i9. I think the Qualcomm modem will be more power efficient and I just want an i9. When? Who knows? I'll keep you up to date, that's for sure. The size difference between them, we've uh, covered that. But you can see the size difference there, that's the differences. The XPS 17 is still quite a bit bigger, isn't it? You can see that there. I'm not so much worried about the size of the XPS 17. I'm more worried about the weight. It's like five and a half pounds. That's a fair commitment. Oh, the display, is it accurate? Well, compared to the MacBook Pro 16, it's not as accurate as that out of the box. You just have to turn it to sRGB mode just to limit that saturation because the reds can look really garish because of the saturation. And once you calibrate these up, they actually calibrate quite well. So that's one thing, yeah might want to check out your display when you get it. Uh, 2060 versus 1650 Ti, 2060 all day. It'll definitely be worth it. Of course, on the XPS 15, you can only get the 1650 Ti. It's still a good graphics card. You've seen, I do 6K content with the XPS 15. The scrubbing's good, it's really good. So, But if you need the power, you're going to have to go to the 17-inch. Now, the vapor chamber. Making a big deal about the vapor chamber. The reality is it's a 130 watt package, so there's no miracles cooling that down. You know, other laptops run pretty cool with just fans, and they're like 180 watts and 230 watts and stuff. So what's good about the vapor chamber is it should be quiet, and also it should be able to get that maximum performance out of those parts. 
within the power limit. So I think whatever the power limit is, it can go all day maximum power. So if they give you 100 watts to use CPU and GPU, maybe a bit more, it'll just do that all day with that vapor chamber. XPS versus Razer versus MSI versus that. <sighs> They're gaming laptops. These are 16 by 10 content creation machines, not the same class. And now I can say that because these have 16 by 10 displays and they have 16 by 9. So a completely different class if you ask me. And hey, if you've got taste, you buy the MacBook Pro, you buy the XPS 15. If you haven't got taste, you go buy one of those other clunkers. Actually, the Razer is a nice design, I will say that. But those things deafen you. They've got bad battery life. Ergonomics aren't that great. And most of them, the design is like, yuck. So, no. Undervolt, no, you can't undervolt at the moment. I think they're undervolting already just to try and justify these 10th generation CPUs because there's virtually no difference between a 10th and a 9th. So 300 cycles on the battery. Oh, yes, that is true. If we have a look here, it clearly states 300 battery cycles. That's how many cycles it's designed for. So I have been looking this up and sometimes there's a difference in the measuring, how they measure cycles compared to other competitors. But say, for example, MacBook Pro that has a thousand battery cycles. Now they do measure them differently, but that doesn't look good, right? 300 battery cycles. But it's easy replaceable. So 300 cycles will still be years. I mean, you don't use a cycle every day, especially if you manage your battery well. But still, compared to a 1,000, yeah, big difference there, isn't there? Luckily, you can replace it. QuickSync, yes, you can use QuickSync. eGPU, cannot get it to work. I cannot get an eGPU to work. I tried three AMD cards, no go. It sees my external enclosure and the actual GPU, but it comes up with an asterisk in device manager and just won't work. I'm going to pull my NVIDIA GPU out of my gaming rig and we'll see how we go there. But so far, an eGPU won't work. Spec recommendations, it's easy. You just get the display you want. I recommend the 4K on both of them, unless you really need the battery life. Will the Full HD be any good? It's 100% sRGB. It's matte compared to 100% Adobe RGB. So it doesn't have the color gamut. It doesn't have the resolution, but it will be fine even for video editing, photography and stuff, especially if you're outputting to the web. But the best display is definitely the 4K. There's no doubt about it. So I recommend you get the 4K display or the 4K Plus. I recommend you get the 2060 with 17 inch. Of course, you get the 1650 Ti with the XPS 15. Now, should you get the 6-core i7 or the 8-core i7? If you can, get the 8-core. The i9 is probably not worth it. You can't even get it anyway at the moment. But even if you got the base i7, the 6-core one, it's still going to be a beast. Now, will the 8-core be hotter than the 6-core? No. It makes no difference. It's all based on wattage, not cores. So basically what happens is, you just use a lower clock on the eight cores, but they both use the same wattage, right? Does my screen flicker? No. Only when I, you know, unplug it, it will flicker for a second. And that's when it's changing from HDR mode to SDR mode. XPS 15 versus XPS 17. Well, the big thing about the 17 is the GPU option and the extra two Thunderbolt ports. Do you need the extra GPU? Would you like extra Thunderbolt ports? Yes. XPS 17? No. Don't even know if I need it. Get the XPS 15. And yes, the XPS 17 is a bit weighty. So yes, that's all the questions. I thank you for asking. Um, I will still have more stuff on the XPS 15 and the XPS 17. When they have the RTX 2060 version available in Australia, I will be ordering that straight away. Uh, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.